sort of a quick intro on the 500 Invest, what we're doing. 500 startups, we have uh, 12 countries right now, 20 languages, so it's something pretty global. And the important piece of it is not just the fund, what we're doing also it's a platform. So a lot of people have asked us, we have done over a thousand investments in thousand companies in 50 countries. We have a founder network of 2,500 uh, entrepreneurs and a network of mentors that have over 250 people. So a lot of people have asked us actually to replicate or learn what we're doing. So that's why we created 500 Invest. And really quickly, a lot of what we do is what we are replicating here on the pre-money. When you want to see something really quickly on one day, we have the pre-money version. When you want to look at something slightly longer, we have a partner actually with Stanford, I'm going to talk about it in May, to do a training program. And if you want to look longer, like what we're doing, we are 500 at service. So you can really dive deep into uh, what the investment do tech, early stage tech investment is. So pulling back a little bit of uh, what uh, Scott Cooper said this morning, what we're trying to do is if you're trying to do at home, we're just giving you like a very, very, very quick insight of what it is. Oh, the slides are jumping really fast. And really specifically about pre-money, when we think about the tracks of how to tracks, we look at sort of four parts of it, right? What's the investment? If you want to start investing, what's the investment thesis? Uh, once you have the thesis, it's how, do you, how are you going to find those deals? Like, how are you going to generate the deal flow? And once you have the deal flow, how do you select the companies? How do you make decision? And once you make the decision, you need to help them grow, but also you want to make sure there's exit. So when we look at the how to tracks, we make sure like we're covering different pieces of it. And later on, on the round table, you can take a lot of things that are discussed now. Uh, um, either it's the challenge or questions you might have, you can take it later on the afternoon round table. So that's the format we put for pre-money, and that's basically what we're covering this morning for our track one. And if you want to take a slightly deeper look of the how to do tech investments, we actually created a, a program with Stanford. It's an insider's guide to Silicon Valley investing. It's going to happen in May. Uh, the first two weeks of May, partially is going to be at uh, Stanford campus, partially is going to be at 500 uh, Accelerator. And if you need more information, it's at 500.vc. All the applications there. And this is basically like the pillars that we're working on, right? You're going to sort of go to the valley, get the insights of the, the experts, both from Stanford and a lot of, we have a, a global team of 12 people on an invest team in different countries. And you, a lot of people are asking also like if it's going to get the certificate towards the end of the program, you get that. The five sort of things that we're looking at, it's the Silicon Valley, uh, stakeholders, what are the opportunities and trends? How do you look at and build your portfolio? In the morning, we talk about minimum 20 companies, but probably you should look more at the 50 so that you can diversify risk. How do you do due diligence? And of course, a lot of case studies that's based on our demo day. You have 30 companies there. On top of that, a lot of networking with other LPs and our mentors. And this you can't really see because we're also building the program. But the two years program, what we say, which, which is 500 service, is you can really tap into like everything that we're doing, whether it's pre-money or whether our LP meetings and all the conferences that we have. So those are like the three pillars that we look at, three programs that we look at. One day, it's the pre-money that we're going to do, you're going to see in the next hour. And the two weeks is going to be in May in uh, Stanford and, and 500 startups. And the long version is going to be mostly at 500 in different parts of the world that you want, if you want to plug in. So directly about what we're talking today, the first track, uh, the first talk that I'm we need to make sure when you're when you look at that sort of four components right like 
if you want to invest, you want to make sure you have an investment thesis. So the first person I'd like to bring up here on stage is uh, Pedro Picon. Pedro Picon is founding partner and managing director, managing partner at Quotidian Ventures. He is actually raising his second fund uh, where we're putting money in. He's a Venezuelan, has uh, very quietly since 2010 invested in over 60 companies. So a lot of when we were asking, how do you build a portfolio? Like you have learned over the past past five years to really build your investment thesis and you're sharing with us uh, now. Please, Peter. Yep, works. Awesome. So welcome and yeah, I do need that. So first of all, congrats on picking the right track. The other track is actually a decoy. This is the <laughs> correct track to be in. So this is actually a first slide. So my name is Pedro Torres Picon. I'm the founder of uh, Quotidian Ventures. We're an early stage fund in, in New York City. Um, I'm going to talk about building an investment thesis, um, which you know I think it's been said why it's important, but let's let's go through it a little bit. So generally, a thesis is a statement or theory that needs to be proven. So it's a, 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 the idea is that it's something that someone believes, but needs to be proven somehow. Generally, how does that apply to investing? Um, in investing, a, th a thesis is more about answering a, the first question that you get when you tell people that you're an investor, right? Which is, what do you invest in? It's uh, the first thing you get, and usually it's a, it's a good question. It's, you know, people usually answer it with, yeah, I invest in real estate, I invest in startups. If you invest in startups, you usually go a little deeper and say, I invest in you know, early stage startups, or I invest in uh, SaaS or something. The idea is that when you answer this question, you answer it with your thesis. You have one, two sentences that explains what you invest in and why and what you believe is going to happen in that market. So there's three, um, three types of investors kind of broadly. There's uh, an, uh, opportunistic investors which kind of invest in whatever comes across their table, uh, judges each deal um, on its own merits. Um, sector trend focused, um, basically focus on SaaS, focus on mobile, focus on you know, international, things like that. And then thesis driven, driven uh, basically you've invested, and these usually actually look more like a process than, than different um, uh, types of investors. Basically, thesis driven means that you started out being uh, opportunistic, you kind of saw uh, every kind of deal. As you build your portfolio, um, you understood that your uh, probably know more about certain deals, so you started focusing on a trend. And if you invest around a trend for um, maybe a year or two, you're developing certain things or certain beliefs around the, the, the sector, and you invest around uh, those beliefs. So uh, if you go back to the definition, there's something that you believe about your market that you're investing around, and if that is proven to be true, you'll make money and your companies will make money. So to develop a thesis, there's two questions you should ask. And uh, the, so the first question is, what do you invest in? Going back to the same, the, the first uh, question. Here's a quote from Ben Horowitz from Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, you want to stick to the things that you're best suited to do, where you're the ver very best for impossible. Basically, uh, what do you know that other people don't know as well, or what, what do you understand really well? And the second question, which this is, if you only answer, whoop, sorry about that. If you only answer the first que this question, you're, a, you're basically a, you're a theme-focused investor. You know what you invest in, but you know, there's not much else. Where, where your thesis comes in is in question number two, which is, what do you believe about that market that you invest in, right? And Peter Thiel um, from PayPal Founders Fund, et cetera, has a question that he uses for hiring or use, uh, choosing companies that is, what do you strongly believe that very few people agree with you on? And basically, that is, what is your unique advantage? You know this is true, but not, not everyone has caught on yet, so invest around that in your market. And that's your thesis, and the idea is that if you find other companies that kind of believe the same thing, they will make a lot of money, and you will make a lot of money with them. So at Quotidian, the our answer to the first question is, we invest in companies transforming large old-school industries with software. So you know, how does software come into education, uh, uh, you know, uh, dentistry, construction, et cetera, transform them, create efficiency, and, and capture part of that value. And what we believe is in those industries, founder market fit is the most important thing to look at um, for founders in the space. So it's more important than being a great engineer, which I guess is the kind of prevalent um, 
idea in, in especially in Silicon Valley, the idea is that you, if you throw a good engineer into a market, they'll figure it out and they'll do it better than anyone else. We believe that more important than being an engineer is having a unique connection to that market. Be it experience, you can have 20 years of experience in the market, or um, a skill that's important to the market, et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of how to get to, to a, a thesis that you can explain. But why is this important, right? Like, why, why even bother? So this is a quote from Fred Wilson, uh, a, a big VC in, in New York City. He says that regardless whether you're Dave McClure or Union Square Adventures, you need to have a, an invest. This is an actual quote from his blog. It actually it's praising Dave's thesis. Um, you need to you need an investment thesis, and you need to stick to it. And uh, you need to make it public, articulate it well, and make sure everyone, particularly your target entrepreneurs, know what it is and why. So why is that? The first reason is that your thesis is your market strategy. Like if you can articulate your thesis well and explain what you believe about your market and the market that you invest in, and blog about it, tweet about it, you know, just do talks about it, et cetera, et cetera, eventually the founders that you need to invest in will come to you because they'll say, hey, he believes what I believe or she believes what I, what I believe, and I'll go and, and people will reach out before they start companies, et cetera, et cetera. So the best way for you to market yourself is by broadcasting your thesis. Um, reason number two is that it, it, a thesis brings you focus and discipline, which I think it was said um, in, in one of the other panels. Uh, we basically, it, there's a lot of FOMO around investing, and there's a lot of, oh, this deal is super hot, and you know, Dave McClure's investing, I should get into. And um, the, <laughs> the idea is, uh, if you have a thesis, sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't, but you should have your own thesis and your own beliefs so that if, if something gets very hot, you have something to go back to and say, hey, do I believe, does this fit the things that I believe in? No, then that's, that's fine. And what, what this gives you beside kind of avoiding certain pitfalls is you find deals that fit your thesis that maybe other people aren't as excited about because it's not what they believe in. So we, it's happened to us a lot where we go to demo days, and you'll go to 500 Startups Demo Day, and there's the, the, you know, the, the social hot company, but there's another company that's doing you know, software for uh, uh, you know, construction or, or uh, an, an old industry, and not, not as many people are, are going after it. So you get the opportunity to talk to them and uh, usually get a, get a better valuation. Number three is that you develop domain expertise around your thesis. So because it's, you're talking about something that, that you believe in um, originally and you invest around that, as you invest in different companies around your thesis and as you understand your thesis better, you start to th do a lot of thinking with your partners, with your companies, and you evolve your thinking around your thesis a lot. That is very, very useful to your companies because when they come to you and say, hey, I believe what you believe, you can say, hey, I've been thinking about this for three years. Here's where we think things are going. So they uh, it make your thesis, thesis better, but it makes them better to hear the thinking around your thesis. If you're right, if you're wrong, well, yeah, have a backup plan. Um, reason four is that you, it's kind of related to number three, but you also build a network of like-minded people. So the same way that, that uh, entrepreneurs will reach out, press who believe uh, what you believe will reach out. Other investors that believe you, what you believe will reach out. And just generally, you will create a, a flywheel that keeps turning and turning and turning. So we get a lot of, uh, of press calls when uh, there's something disrupting an old school industry just because people know that that's what we're about. And they, they, that just helps. In, 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 it helps inform the thesis, find companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so you've developed a thesis. You know why it's important, exciting. Now what? What, what do you do with it, right? And so there's kind of three things that um, are important to keep in mind once you've, you have a thesis that, that you're comfortable with. So another quote from Fred about um, sticking to your thesis. So once you have it, you need to stick with it. There's all kinds of temptations that come along to invest outside the thesis. You have to resist them. Discipline's about sticking to, to what you know and what you believe in totally and completely. So basically, it, it's not that once you develop a thesis, things outside of it are bad investments. It's just not what you do. Um, and it's, it, it, for us, it was, it, you know, developing that discipline takes time. We started out investing in everything. We developed the thesis and we invested around the thesis mostly. But a couple of years ago, as an example, we, I'm going to try to not give too many details around this, but the, we, I, I met a, an entrepreneur who was working on something completely outside the thesis. It was a dating gaming app. Um, and I sat down with him and I was like, well, this is definitely outside what we do. But his metrics looked great. You know, it was right around Tinder was getting big. Um, and I was like, wow, this is good. This could be big. Maybe we can skip the thesis for this one thing. And, and, we, and, and we actually did it. Like, we actually skipped the thesis and we did the deal. And um, 
it wasn't that the company's not doing great or anything, it's just we are an awful investor for that company because we don't know anything about what they're doing. So as they came to us and said, hey, you know what I do, like, do my metrics look good, right? Like, am I growing what I should be growing? I don't know, and we were like Googling in like Quora to see if their, if their metrics actually look good, and that's absolutely not what you should be doing as an investor. If one of our other companies comes in, we can usually compare through our entire portfolio and say, yeah, of course you're doing great, you're not, and have good advice. So we, we were just awful for them, and it, it taught us to really stick to that, that thesis. That said, um, knowing when to evolve is also really important. So um, there's a, 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 a researcher at the Institute from the Future that in the 80s said uh, that you should have, basically they said to all their researchers, you should have strong, opini strong opinions weakly held. What that meant is that they basically, once you reach a, a, a conclusion from research, like gra grab a hypothesis with whatever data you have and understand that hypotheses just by, by nature are imperfect because you never had perfect data, but have, uh, grab a hypothesis and defend it very strongly. But the weakly held part is understand and even be, op uh, be open to or looking for it to be disproven, right? So like go out and look for data that disproves it and immediately evolve it. So invest only around your thesis, but be looking to disprove and evolve your thesis as much as you can. And then this is kind of a, a bonus. So there, uh, Chris Dixon also from Medusin Horowitz. Um, basically have a thesis, but also have an antithesis. And the idea of that is that once, like it, it, having a thesis is different from having a sector focus. Like you can say, oh, I focus on mobile, and that's a focus, and it, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's not necessarily a thesis. So uh, having a thesis is something, so you, you would go into mobile with your antithesis and say, okay, what wouldn't we invest in here to make sure that you, you have a thesis? So a, a good example for, for us, the antithesis is, if there's a company transforming an old school market, uh, a, a large kind of existing market, and the only competitive advantage that the team has to attack that market is being great engineers, we will not do that company. There needs to be something else beside, oh, we can build great software. Like, what's the, the real connection to the market that they have? And that's actually, it's helpful because it keeps us from, you know, companies that we're just, that don't really fit the thesis. So a little bit of further reading. Uh, Fred's blog that I mentioned a couple of times, Brad's blog, uh, also, Search for thesis in both of these. There are um, a bunch of articles that talk a lot about, and read the comments too, because a lot of smart people comment about the, what the thesis does. And Dave's thesis that he wrote in, in 2010 is it's a really good example. It, it might have evolved by this point, but it, it, uh, it it's a really good example of a well thought out and like well reasoned. Like there's it's long, so like do it on, a, on like a Saturday or Sunday. But like it's it's a really well thought out kind of how do I think about the market? Why do I go into everything else? And like why I think what I think. So that is actually it. Um, so I think we have uh, some some time for questions. How much time do we have for questions? Okay, cool. See? Nice. <laughs> yeah? Uh, whoa, Pedro. So, uh, so what happens if uh, you decide to change some of your thesis? Uh, I'm not saying that my 2010 investment thesis wasn't brilliant and perfect, but <laughs> maybe there was some iteration down the road. And then how do you communicate that to your investors? if you decide to take a 10 degree uh, turn or heaven forbid a 90 degree turn from your initial thesis. Yeah, so I mean, I think uh, investors should be cognizant that theses sh will change. Like they, they have to, I think any investor that doesn't want you to change your thesis is probably not a great investor because the, the, like the market will change and you'll, uh, the thesis will change through it. Um, the, the bigger challenge is, so we, it, we did that company that, uh, that was outside of thesis, but we've also done companies that when we were investing around, our, so the way that kind of we progressed around our thesis was invest in everything, invest in, in companies that are focusing on, on uh, old school markets with software, and then with that we said, well, you know, let's invest with people who have uh, experience in that market. Um, and that's not a good generalization because people who have experience in the market aren't uh, always the best to disrupt it. Um, so that evolved to what's the, the particular connection to that market, and that evolution, um, it, now we're investing in, com in companies that we wouldn't have invested in before, or we invested before in companies that we wouldn't invest in now. And I think it's just kind of part of it, right? Like you, you, you don't disown the companies that you did when you, when you had a different thesis, and uh, your investors should be comfortable with understanding that that you know the thesis will change. 
What's your opinion or your, um, what you guys do around geography? Like, do you have to be like the guys in San Francisco where you're, the investment has to be on the way to the club, you know, in the afternoon, or, 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 or you can meet them for lunch down the street, right? <laughs> so we, because we invest really, really early, um, we, we're usually the first check into the company. Um, we like to do companies in, in New York, where we are. Um, but it, again, it's, it's, it, it's to what you know and what you can do and what, what you're good at, right? So like we, we do it in New York because we like to meet with our companies uh, regularly and there's um, you know a, a lot of things that we do uh, locally. We have a good network to vet people. We, have, we can help them hire, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's not to say that it's not a good thesis to, or, or a good strategy to go outside and invest internationally. So the, I guess it's, again, playing to your strengths and where your, your networks are. So what is your antithesis? Yeah, so I, I, I think I, I touched on it a little bit, but the, the, our antithesis is basically not investing in, in companies where the only competitive advantage that people have in, in disrupting an old school market is being good engineers. That's the, the we do not invest in that. We'll, we'll invest in a company where there are good engineers. I mean, and this is specific to our thesis because like good engineers are great in building engineering tools <laughs> like uh, because they have the domain expertise. Um, but just for us, it doesn't really work well. Yeah, so as a follow-on to my original question, um, do you find that problematic, the geography and your domain expertise? Because if you're in New York, I'm thinking that could be a problem. <laughs> because if you're looking at New York and domain expertise, you're not finding, like my, my experience over 25 years is the domain experts aren't where you want them to be. So in Silicon Valley, like the guy spoke this morning, he had to actually move there, move his company there, bring his domain expertise to them, become successful and then move, move the company back. Yep, agreed. So there, it's definitely a challenge. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a limiting factor and we, we have invested, so in, in our first fund, we did about 30% of the deals um, outside of New York. We're probably gonna do around 25% of the deals outside of New York in the, in the second fund. To do that, we need a partner that does that, what we do um, in New York there, right? So ideally, there's someone locally that will work with the companies and kind of like have the network to help them hire, et cetera, or they can just move to New York or move to wh where there's another investor who can do that. Um, but it is definitely anything that limits, so the, the thing with the, th the thesis and a focus is that it'll limit what you invest in, and that's always a problem, so you have to keep it as broad as, as you can. So a question that might be near and dear to people's hearts. So how does having a thesis affect your ability to fundraise from LPs? Yeah, so it, it, it definitely, especially if it's a differentiated thesis, um, it, it helps a ton, right? Because I think the way that LPs look at it, and we're new to the fundraising process, like we're, we've been uh, doing it for about a month and a half, and what's been resonating with LPs, like a lot of LPs get pitched by hundreds of funds, right? So if you have a fund that, that comes into pitch that has a very differenti a differ differentiated thesis, differentiated focus, it, it goes one of two ways. Or immediately on your first slide, they'll be like, oh. Or, you know, immediately in your first slide, you see them kind of bright, you know, light up and see, yeah, this is exactly kind of what we're And then the conversation goes really well, which both are kind of helpful because you want to know if they're out immediately. Um, so, yeah, it, it helps a, a ton. So you've spoken a lot about the importance of having a thesis. Could you talk about how, how your thesis evolved and the process of actually creating it from inception to today? Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, so in, uh, we started out, I mean, we had a focus on early stage, um, and we, not, we didn't even have a really a, a sector focus in 2010, um, and we, yeah, it, it, we just basically started seeing everything that was coming in, and we started getting enamored with this uh, trend of companies um, basically going into very, very old industries and creating efficiency and capturing value from creating the efficiency. So we naturally kind of started to focus more around those, and that's also, so myself and my, I have other three other partners, two part-time and one full-time, and it's kind of what our strengths really, really played to. Um, 
So we, we came into that as a, as a focus area first. And then immediately when, that, when we chose that as our f focus area, we said, okay, how can we be really helpful here? And then um, what works here and what doesn't? So we've taken a lot of time to think and you know, we've taken those you know, little corporate offsites in, in New York and we've said, okay, what, like, what is good and what is working here? And what we saw is that um, there were a lot of companies in uh, creating software to disrupt old school industries that were just failing because it was the the old you know drop an engineer in and it was and it would just work and they would build the best software, um, and they were it would, it just was not working because you drop an engineer into the construction market and they wouldn't know the lingo they just wouldn't know how to how things were done like how do you like it, they wouldn't really really understand the problem that they kind of saw from the outside, so then we evolved that into okay you need to have experience in the in the market. Um, but that didn't actually work either <laughs> uh, all the time. It worked a couple of times. But so th then we figured out, okay, uh, just experience is one of the connections you can have to a market, but there's a lot of other ways. And, and that's kind of where we are now. Cool. Two follow-up questions to what you guys seen from your 60 companies invested. By what time, like 20, 30 companies start having the thesis? Or right at the beginning? Like how many are, are in the thesis? No, no, yeah, like... Well, like what you were doing, like one, two, three, when you reached like 20, you felt like you had a thesis, or when you reached 60, you felt you had a thesis? So I, feeling like you have a thesis, that should have been a whole, a whole part of the presentation. I, I, I don't know, I, I think, I'm not sure I, I still feel like I have a thesis. So I think it's always, it's an evolution, right? Like, and you're kind of always developing and always thinking around it. Um, some people articulate it really well, but when you talk to them, they're like, oh, I don't know, I mean, we're it's just, we're still figuring it out. Um, so I, I, I think, Probably 15 companies in, we felt we have a, we had a focus, and we knew what we were. But like you know, it's still pretty much evolving. I think that was the time for the last question. And Pedro, thank you very much. Awesome, thank you very for much. Opening.